Bible Church of Berwick. Open your hymn books to hymn number 14, Worthy of Praise. Are you online? 14. We're online, yes. Or on Facebook. <laughs> Oh uh-huh. 
no mistakes. Bibles, please, to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Glad to have you all here this evening. I regret that on Sunday morning I did not announce what I was going to preach on tonight. I meant to do that, and when I got up behind the pulpit, I totally forgot. But tonight I want to teach you how to live a successful Christian life. If I had announced it on Sunday, would we see a few more people here tonight? Do people want to know how to live a successful Christian life? To be a success spiritually? I'm not sure that people do, but perhaps if I had announced it, we would have gotten a few more people here. And I'm not trying to make it sound simplistic. Do this, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or however many points I have tonight. You know, do these and you'll have it made in the shade. I'm not implying that it's easy. What I want to do is show you, hey, if you're going to be successful, successful spiritually, here are some things you need to be doing. Okay? So Joshua chapter 1, and I'm going to start with verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. 
Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's bow in prayer. We ask, Lord, that you would teach us truths from your word tonight that we can apply in our own lives and that will assist us in living spiritually successful lives. I pray in Jesus' name. This evening I'm going to share with you an outline that is an acrostic of the word success. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S -S. So that will be an easy outline, taking notes. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. Seven points. Perfect number there. I trust that all of you who are here tonight do want to be a spiritual success. And by sharing these seven points, I hope I can give you at least some reminders that will be of help to you in being that spiritual success that you want to be and that God wants you to be. The first point should be rather easy. If there's one verse I slowed down and emphasized as I was reading, which verse was it of those nine verses? It was a verse that talked about being a success. Eight, very good. Let me read that one again. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. According to this verse, what did God tell Joshua he would need to do in order to have good success. Meditate in his word. He needed to have the word of God in two places. This book of the law shall not depart from where? His mouth. Your mouth. And you shall <clears throat> meditate on it. Okay? He needed to have it in his mouth needed to have it in his mind. He needed to meditate on the word of God day and night so that he could do according to all that was written therein. When Joshua was to make a decision, he was to base it on what he knew to be true in God's word. So our first point in the acrostic of the word success is this. Search the scripture. There's your first S. Search the scripture. Are you familiar with a verse in the New Testament? You don't need to tell me the book or the verse, but a verse in the New Testament that we've heard of where some people search the scriptures. Who was known for searching the scripture? A group of people from a certain area or city. The Bereans. Very good. Christians in Berea. Acts 17.11. We learned that the Christians in Berea were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. The Bereans were a spiritual success because they spent time searching the scripture. How much time do you and I spend searching the scripture? Do you take time to read it every day? At least a chapter of it? And as you read, do you look for truths? Do you look for principles? Do you look for things that you can apply to your own life? If you're going to be a spiritual success, you're going to have to search the scriptures. Besides searching the scripture, what should we do if we want to be a spiritual success? You know, as little children, you learn that song. Read your Bible, read your Bible, pray every day. All right, so for the second point, you're going to say, how are you going to get a you out of this one? Unceasing in prayer. 
If we're going to be spiritual success, we must be unceasing in prayer. That should remind you of another New Testament verse. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Can you give me a, a book, chapter, and verse? First Thessalonians, ain't it? Very good. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. If you are going to be a success spiritually, you must spend time in prayer. <clears throat> Praying is hard. Praying is hard work. It requires concentration. My mind wanders. I have to work at praying. That's why I use a prayer list. That's why I recommend you use a prayer list with specific requests that you are bringing before the throne of grace. Unceasing in prayer. There's a third thing we ought to have as a part of a, a habit of our lives if we're going to be a spiritual success. When we know that we've done wrong, what ought we to do? Confess. So the first C is confessing sin. Searching the scripture, unceasing in prayer, confessing sin. Can you think of any verse that you might have memorized about confessing sin? 1 John 1 9. He said the reference she was quoting it. Can you quote 1 John 1 9 with me? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And another that's one most of us have memorized. Another good one is Proverbs 28 13. Listen, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Not confess them and do them again and again and again. Confess them and what? Forsake them. Those who confess their sin and forsake their sin will have mercy. Not only should we confess our sins, there's something else we should confess. Do you have any clue what it is? It isn't something bad. It's something good we should confess. Would everybody please turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Anybody have any clue what it is that we should confess? That's a good thing to confess? Can't think of it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Who are we to confess? We're, we are to confess Christ. So there's the second C, confessing Christ. We are to confess our sin. We are to confess Christ. In other words, be a witness, be a testimony for him. He speaks in verse 32 of confessing him before men. And if we confess that we know Christ before men, he will confess us before his father. Verse 33 says, but whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. Do you tend to speak up on behalf of Jesus Christ when God, the Bible, or Christianity is brought up in a conversation? Or do you kind of close up when you hear that conversation come up? Jesus said in Mark 8, 38, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with we need to confess Christ. As God gives us opportunities, I pray every day, Lord, give us opportunities to be a testimony for you, to speak up on behalf of Jesus Christ. Let people know what the Word of God says. What's the next letter in the word success? E. E, very good. What can we let the E stand for? How about 
enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. And here I think of the verse Nehemiah 8.10. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you know that chorus? I look for it in our book. It's not there. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yet many Christians look and act as if they have no joy. Pastor just spent how many months preaching messages on it on Sunday morning? People are looking for happiness. You may not find happiness, but you can always have the joy of the Lord as your strength. Many Christians look as though they're pretty miserable. Instead of shouting, wow, I've got the Lord, they're bemoaning, woe is me. We sing happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. But when we're singing it, uh, most of us are looking as though we're kind of sad that Jesus washed our sins away. You know, if you've got the Lord in your heart, you ought to also have the joy of the Lord in your heart. And if you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, you ought to inform your face. Good idea? Enthusiasm. The joy of of the Lord. For the next one, you're there in Matthew. Go back several pages to the last book in the Old Testament, which is what? Malachi. Malachi. Go to Malachi chapter 3, everybody, please. Malachi chapter 3. What do we read about? What is Malachi 3 known for? That's the passage we always turn to when the pastor's preaching about what? The coming messenger. What? The coming messenger. Uh, that would be true, but that's not what I'm looking for. What's Malachi 3 known for? Tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings, right. How are we going to get an S out of that? Storehouse tithing. Storehouse tithing. Malachi chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 8 to 10. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. If you want to be a spiritual success in your life with Christ, you have got to be obedient to him in your giving. The word tithe means what? It means a tenth, 10%. 10% of our income belongs to God. There's no way we can get around that. Malachi says that we are to bring our tithes into the storehouse. For New Testament Christians, the storehouse is church. the local church, right. The general fund of your local church where you ought to be a member. It's the place that we attend. It's a place where we are fed spiritually, right? So it should be the place where we give back. We give back by serving in our local church. We give back by giving. It's the place where we ought to tithe 10% on every paycheck we receive. And yet many, many Christians fail to obey God in this and then wonder why they're not living successful Christian lives. The, the answer is simple. How can God bless you in your walk with him if you're stealing from him? How would you treat somebody who's stealing from you? Our tithes belong to the Lord. And then as the Lord enables us, we can give offerings over and above our tithes. We can choose to give that money to the general fund of our church. We could give it to other worthy causes, the missions fund, the building fund. can give it to special speakers, such as the evangelists that we have here every year. Storehouse tithing is part of being obedient to God. Okay, for the last S, would you turn please to Romans chapter 12. 
Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Pastor Thomas refers to these verses often. These verses, I really wish there were three S's on the word success. These verses speak of surrender and separation. So that's the last S. Surrender and separation. We are to live lives surrendered to the Lord and separated from the world. Let me read Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, or I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 1 speaks of our surrender to Him. Our offering our lives, our bodies, as a living sacrifice to God. God, you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. You died for me. In return, I'm going to dedicate my life to you. Every believer ought to dedicate his or her life to Jesus Christ. God, I'm going to live for you. God, show me how you would have me to serve you. So it's a life of surrender. And then verse 2, it's a life of separation. Don't be conformed to the world, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Having your mind and your life transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Living as he would live. Acting as he would act. Don't pattern your life after the world. Pattern your life after the Lord. All right. Does that give you all enough to work on this week? <laughs> and for the rest of your life? Search the scripture. Be unceasing in prayer. Confess sin. Confess Christ. Enthusiasm. The joy of the Lord storehouse title and then the last point surrender and separation Bob would you turn that off now please <laughs>